Hello guys and gals. Uh, welcome to this video. In this video we're going to be in, uh, assembling the 180cc big bore power kit. This is a really nice Taiwan kit. I've already uh, kind of done a video of what's all included in the kit. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the assembly. Uh, so, first thing you're probably going to want to do is to install your uh, chain guide. Now, I've already installed it in the one that we're going to be working on. I got a little bit ahead of myself, so I'll quickly show you how to do that. I've got a spare here, and I'll show you how to do it. Basically, you're going to stick this guide down into the left crankshaft, or the left crankcase, and then this bolt right here is going to go through the opposite side and uh, secure it through that, that hole right there. So that's how you secure that. I'll show you how to do that. We'll be right back. Okay, so here's the inside of the crankcase. This is where this is going to go through. We'll feed the uh, chain guide through here, just like this. Remember, this side is the side, I'm sorry, this side is the side that the chain will be traveling on. So, you take it and you stick it down in there, and you see it come through there. Once that's in place, take your bolt. One thing to mention, make sure it's got a good uh, O-ring on there. If your O-ring is bad, you're gonna leak oil inside your crankcase and it's, and it's gonna get all in here. It's gonna leak all over the inside of your crankcase. So, make sure you have a good O-ring. So, you simply feed that into there and tighten it on down and that's all there is to install in the uh, chain guide for the 180cc power kit okay next up is what we're going to be installing is the crankshaft but i wanted to make a quick note normally you would be putting a m12 flange bolt right here uh with a thread pitch of 1.5 however in this case I'm installing the Koso uh, oil temperature sender so that's why that's in there but if you're not installing this is where this is a good place to install a oil sender unit because it's in the bottom of where your oil is going to be so anyways that's what the purpose of that is chances are you'll likely be installing the M12 flange bolt I just wanted to point that out real quick so now we're gonna get on to the crankshaft installation okay so now we're gonna be on to the crankshaft installation to install the crankshaft you're gonna have to put the chain down in the same slot where you just installed the chain guide but I wanted to make a note about the gasket let me get it in place here Okay, now this gasket right here, I have colored. The red areas on, these, on this gasket needs to be trimmed. This right here, if you do not trim it, this with time will become brittle inside your engine and fall apart. And you'll wind up with it in your oil and it'll make a mess. You do not want that to happen. This also needs to be trimmed off, obviously, elsewise your piston would come up and take it off for you, which would again make a mess. So I just wanted to point that out. Now, for the gasket, this is a Taiwan kit, and they provided a really nice gasket set. But here's what one looks like trimmed. But I wanted to point out real quick, I always give my gaskets uh quick coat of a uh, copper gasket spray 
This stuff is awesome. It conducts the heat in between the two components really, really well. It almost makes it like a thermal compound in between, you know, a CPU and a heat sink. In addition, it fills micro pores, you know, it gets in the small little cracks, fills irregularities. It's good stuff for when you're putting aluminum to aluminum together, especially when it's high temperature. So, I just like to hit my gaskets with that, and I just wanted to point that out. So, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to get the chain in place, you know, I'm going to stuff it through here. I'll come back on the video once I get that in place and get my gasket laid. It's also important to point out, have your, uh, I don't quite know what these are called. They're dowel pins, but, uh, I don't know, your crankcase guides, they're guide pins so that when you put your two crankcase halves together uh it holds them and you know it guides them together and make sure everything's in proper alignment so anyways we'll get to that and let me go grab the crank and get the chain set and we'll be right back okay now here we are i know i was gone forever huh <laughs> yeah, I know. That's the magic of doing these videos. You know, I can set this down, be gone for like 20 minutes, and then come back. But anyways, I'll let you know what I'm doing here. Okay, the reason I have this butane torch going is I like to heat up the block before I uh, install the crankshaft. Now... The reason I heat up the block, actually, before I go on to that, let me, uh, yeah, I, I'm getting totally ahead of myself here. I have a tendency to do that, so just bear with me, please. The chain, see how I got it stuffed in there? You're going to want to make sure it's up and out of your way for when you put that crank down in there. So just use your finger and make sure you push it as far as it'll go. Now... Also, I'll come back to that. Look, see my crankshaft, how it looks nice and frosty? The reason my crankshaft looks like that is because I put it in this uh, padded envelope and stuck it in the freezer for a couple hours. Now, the reason I'm doing that, hot, hot and cold, the two metals are going to expand and, and contract and allow me to in, uh, insert that crankshaft in there. Without doing this, it's uh, very, very hard to get that installed. Oh, I'll be right back. My butane tank is running low on me. And they have a tendency, if you get too close, you'll make it go out. Now, one thing you're going to want to be careful of is not to burn your oil seal that oil seal down in there oh I did it again okay so i'm just going to try to be a little more careful and focus a little more on the block here so if i drift off the block i apologize but if you get your torch tip uh too close to the block they will cause it to go out. So, what I'm doing right here is I'm just heating this uh, metal up. I like to try to get it up to a temperature of about 200 degrees. Well, really about 150. I've got a no contact thermometer over here. Uh oh, making funny noises. My tank really feels like it's low. So... Gotta... Check my temperature here. Only at 86 degrees, I don't know. 115 in some spots. 
heat it up a little more. At this rate, my crankshaft is gonna beat off. Trying to make sure I keep away from that oil seal. Alright, that's probably plenty good enough. So, okay, now I'll try to get this on camera without getting in your way. Not wanting to drop in there. Uh oh. Uh. Okay, I had got the chain stuck in between them, in between the crankshaft and the crankcase. You guys can see that? My wife made me that shirt, Zuma Killer. I'm converting a Bentelli Havoc into a, a Zuma Killer, is what I'm going to call it. So, once you get your crank sha shaft uh, dropped in, in that side, throw your gasket on. Make sure you make sure your gasket surfaces are completely clean, free of any debris. And here's an up close look. So now I'm going to heat up this other side real quick and then I'll seal them together. Be right back. And here we go, attempting to drop the right side crank on there, right, right side crankcase on there. All right, there we go. Now it's snapped down. And beautiful. Everything's turning over like it's supposed to so far. Now, 
I like to try to get some bolts in there to try to secure these pieces together and get uh, the gasket sealing. Okay, so now we're going to install two of the crankcase bolts. These are really the only two bolts that hold the engine halves together in this portion. All the main bolts that really hold all the pressure is in the next section, the timing cover. But anyways, I wanted to take this time to point out that I always use Threadlocker Blue. These aluminum blocks, as you've just seen, they expand and contract when the heat uh, kicks in and the cold kicks in. So you always want to use Threadlocker to make sure your uh, bolts stay where they're supposed to be. This is an 8 millimeter flange uh, bolt. Alright, so once you get the lock tight, go ahead and put the... figure I should probably uh, be showing you on the camera. These are the bolts. Just hand tighten it is plenty good enough for now. Uh, you remember this is an aluminum block and they're very 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 easy to strip out I always use quarter inch when I'm torquing these down I even later on go over them with the quarter inch uh, torque wrench uh, you don't need much torque and the thread locker is what's gonna hold these babies in place for you alright so this is going to conclude the crankshaft installation portion of the 180cc power kit. Uh, you know, I just like to note here that to do, you know, to check it, make sure nothing's binding. I always, you know, turn it by by the chain, and nothing's binding. She's cranking good. Everything's turning nice and good, nice and smooth. Everything's going perfect with this build so far. I marked on there, 65. If you're curious, the opening on here is 65 millimeter. So, anyways, that's going to conclude the crankshaft installation for the 180cc power kit. Uh, thanks for watching my video and give me a like if you like it. Thanks for watching guys and gals. Have a good one. Oh yeah, be sure to visit my uh, web store and my website at www.martinmopeds.com Or you can also see us, well soon to be launching uh, GY6 Tech Depot and Dan's Garage Talk. Alright, uh, you guys have a good one. Later on.